So one of the issues I've wrestled with in doing these guitar videos is how do I center my guitar in the frame and how do I keep it there you know, during the recording session? As you may be aware, it is really frustrating to find out during the editing process that the guitar has drifted out of frame and you may have to reshoot the take. So after trying a few different mirroring apps, I finally settled on a power mirror. I found it to be reliable and also fairly easy, you know, to use. In this video, I'll show you how to broadcast from an iPhone to an iPad, and then I'll walk through how I use the app during a recording session. So if you don't have a power mirror on your iPhone already, um, you can download it from the App Store. And there it is. That's the one you're going to want to download. This A Power Mirror blue icon with the white M. That's the one that we'll be using to monitor a, a video shoot. All right. So to start the broadcast session, we need to launch the apps from the iPad and the iPhone. There's the iPad. And the iPhone. Uh, now, it doesn't matter the order that you launch them. You know, the main thing is that the iPad and the iPhone are both known to the same Wi Fi network. That's the important thing. So, by the Wi Fi label on the iPhone, you can see this warning message cannot obtain the name of Wi Fi now. And that is just a warning message. It has no effect on the broadcast feature. So, you know, that's, that's not a problem. So the next thing is to log into your account. So we tap on the me icon, tap to log in, and you can get two kinds of accounts. There's a free account and the free account will give you 10 minutes of session time. The paid account, you can now get six years for $60. I used the free account for a while, but you know, the 10 minute limit really got tedious. And then last year they were offering six years for $60. So I thought, okay, that sounds reasonable. And back to the main screen. Now the next step after logging in is to tap on this local cast button. And you'll see that a power mirror is searching the Wi-Fi network and a power mirror finds my iPad. So it will just, Select my iPad. And now we get the broadcast screen. So you have these three entries, screen broadcast, a power mirror upload, start broadcast. And this little white dot here is going to be a countdown when we tap on start broadcast. So we'll go ahead and do that. Three, two, one. And uh, there you go. The uh, iPhone display is now being shown on my, uh, on my iPad. I'll swipe up, swipe up again, check out a few apps, calculator, clock. But of course, the app that we're interested in is the camera app. So we'll tap on my camera app, scroll over to video. All right, so let's shoot a little test video. We'll tap on the red dot. There we go. You can see it's being displayed on my iPad. There's my desktop. There's my DAW with my uh, reflection of my ring light. Desktop. There we go. All being shown on the iPad. I'll stop recording. So now we'll navigate back to A Power Mirror. We'll swipe up. Tap on A Power Mirror. Tap Disconnect. Tap stop broadcast. And there you go. Broadcast session has ended. Let's swipe up. Let's swipe up again. Put the iPad back to the home screen. All right, so let's check out my uh, test vid. Tap on the camera. There we go. You can see this. There's my desktop. 
There's my DAW with my uh, reflection of my ring light. Desktop. There we go. We'll stop the uh, vid. All right, so that's it. Back to the home screen. Yeah, so now I'll show you how I make use of this A-Power mirror when I'm doing a uh, recording session. All right, so this is my setup for recording my guitar. Today I am recording with my WA-47 Junior condenser mic, which is connected to my DAW, which happens to be Reaper. Now here's the camera on the guitar right in front of me here. I'm going to get a nice close in tight shot. And then over there is my iPad, which I'm using as a monitor. So I have set up an A power mirror session with my iPhone that's on the guitar with my iPad. So I'll be able to center my guitar in the frame. So let's go ahead and do that. So right away, I got to be careful about the ring light reflection. If I just move this guitar around a little bit, and that would be like very distracting, you know, for the viewer. So I'm going to have to be uh, aware of how I'm sitting in the chair so I don't get that ring light. And right now I have too much body and not enough, not enough of the neck. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. And it's better. I'm still getting that ring if I move around a little bit. But I want to get the whole neck, so... I'll move back a little bit. So if I position myself like this, then uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. I get the whole neck. Okay. There. This is just cut off right about here, which is all right, because I mostly want to concentrate on getting between the sound hole and the top of the fretboard, and which I'm going to have in that shot. Now, some people might want to just kind of, you know, back off and do a, uh, a more far away shot and then kind of crop it, take the, the angle they want. Um, I, I tend not to want to crop because I find that when I do cropping, I lose some amount of resolution. So I'll try to get the uh, tightest shot I can get without needing to crop the, uh, crop the video. Let's record a riff. Turn on the guitar camera. All right, there we go. And so now I can see what I'm recording on this iPad over here. So back in position, looks good. Oh yeah, and do a little hand clap. I do the hand clap so that later on when I'm editing the video, I can sync up my uh, guitar vid with my external audio, which I'll have, you know, treated with, uh, uh, with Reaper.
Now, of course, I understand we all have our own way of doing these recording sessions. This is just kind of where I landed. Hope you got something out of it. I'm always looking for ways to make this easier and more fun. So with that, yeah, we'll see you next time.